Hey there, Ramon Osa with you here. And today we're gonna look at Federer's forehand and I'm gonna show you five reasons why it's arguably the greatest weapon in tennis history. And most importantly, what you can copy to give your forehand an edge over your competition. And we lead off with perhaps the least sexy of all five, which is positioning. And if you look at Roger Federer and you look at any of the best pros in the game, one thing they all have in common is that they're great movers. And most importantly, they get in perfect position to hit the ball quickly. I always tell my students to try and beat the ball to the bounce, meaning you want to be in position to hit the ball before the ball bounces on your side of the net. The bottom line is if you watch most rallies at the highest level, the player who's set up to hit his shot in good position earliest is typically in control of the rally. And this is something you can definitely use in a rally in practice or even a match is tell yourself and get in position to hit the ball early. If you need help with anticipation, stay tuned to the end and I'll give you a link to my how to master anticipation video. Moving on to number two, and really the most important thing in any shot, including the forehand, and the reason Federer's forehand is so dangerous, is his contact point. We're talking about the exact moment his strings touch the ball. And there's two things I want you to be aware of here. The first is the fact that he makes contact at the 45 degree angle into the court religiously. This is something I've covered at length in a bunch of my other videos. It's the ideal contact point because it's the balance point between the vertical and the horizontal axes and it makes changing the direction of his shot easier because a fairly small wrist position tweak at contact can change the direction of the ball completely. The second part of the contact point is the length of his arm into contact. This is just physics, and I'm no science expert. In fact, was never really any good at it, but I do know that the longer a lever is, the more work it can do. And in tennis, the more extended your arm is at contact, all things else being equal, the more force you can put into the ball. And this is a big sticking point with the killer kangaroo here because he's got short arms. Same with the T-Rex. And Federer's got a pretty straight arm at contact. He's really extended, which is part of the reason his ball has that deadening thud to it when you hear it hit. These are two elements of the contact point that you can copy, and it's something I talk a lot more about in the Simple Forehand 2.0, which will be coming out soon. The third part of Federer's forehand that makes it so deadly is the tightness of his coil. And if you watch his stroke here, you'll notice how there's a spiraling out of his arms away from his body, expanding into the hit. This is exactly opposite of what I see a lot of club players doing, which is kind of starting their arms more away from their body and then ending up getting jammed into contact. We want your forehand to go inside out with your arms starting in towards your body and slowly, deliberately expanding outward as we go through your stroke. As for creating even more power, you'll never see Federer swing harder. What he does is he tightens his coil more. He creates more potential energy by keeping his body away from the ball more. And then he lets it go and really lays into the ball. A little bonus tip here is to realize that Federer's elbow stays more towards his hitting side, which shortens the swing radius, improving his timing and speed of his stroke without sacrificing any power. Study Federer's coil and see if you can emulate what he does here. The fourth thing, and this sort of falls in the unsexy category, but hugely important, is that Federer's head is always still at contact. He's become kind of the poster child for this, and it's so important because your head is so directly linked to your balance. I mean, if you just try and walk around with your head bobbing around, you know, like those dolls, just see how much it messes with your balance. Well, you can look at a million pictures of Federer at contact, and you'll notice that his eyes are always right there at contact. This is definitely is not the norm for most rec players, and even some pros. We tend to get curious. We look off the ball, and as a result, shank a lot more balls than we should. And you can fix this by training your eyes to stay on the ball. And as you know, the eye coach I use in a lot of my videos is great for that. And if you want one, I'll leave a link so you can get a discount on it down below. Number five, after all of that, he's super relaxed, isn't he? I mean, as Will Farrell called him yesterday, a silky gazelle. And that's so right on. You could walk behind Roger during any part of his backswing, sneak up on him, and you could just pluck the racket right out of his hand. And he's so loose during every part of his swing up until right before contact. And that's something that we can all use a little bit more of. And you can practice this with a little awareness drill. Hit 10 or 20 balls, and after each ball you hit on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being super loose and 10 being really tight, just tell yourself how tight or loose you are and work on getting that 
each rep looser and looser. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, do me a favor and click the like button. Subscribe so you catch next week's lesson where I'll announce the winner of our free instructional course and leave any comments or questions you have down below. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.